This is Dave Doggett, and you're listening to the Maritime Outdoorsman Podcast, Episode 10. Hello there, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Maritime Outdoorsman Podcast. And uh, this is number 10, that's awesome. Um, I'm pretty excited to have made it this far. And uh, this one is going to be a little out there. Um, How many of you know that there is gold to be found in the Maritimes? Um, Now, before I get too far ahead of myself... I'm not so sure about places like Prince Edward Island, um, but personally speaking, um, you know, basically everything that I'm going to be talking about is from my own personal experience here in Nova Scotia, but I'm fairly certain that there is gold to be found in New Brunswick, so uh, this should apply to you as well. And when I say gold, I am talking gold, the, the stuff that shines on your rings and your watches, real gold. And this whole concept blew my mind two years ago. Um, I remember it very clearly. Uh, Not too far from where I live, there's a place called The Ovens, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't been there. And uh, I believe it was my my wife's birthday. And we decided to take the day and do a little family trip out to The Ovens, hang out, look at the caves. And The Ovens is basically a, a nature park. Um, based around um, a gold rush that they had there years ago, quite a few years ago. And in the scheme of things, it really wasn't a huge gold rush, but at the time, you know, it it was pretty big. Um, So there's these caves, sea caves, that the ocean waves kind of dig out and and that were dug out by people back in the day, uh, looking for the gold veins and, and all that. So in this episode... I'm going to try and get you psyched up for gold prospecting, and I'm going to tell you about how I got into it, why I'm fascinated by it, and some of the very basics um, that go along with gold prospecting. And uh, believe it or not, um, gold prospecting kind of swept me off my feet, took me by surprise, and I almost didn't even want to touch a fishing rod for over a year. It just it occupied every bit of my spare time. So how it started, we did this trip to the ovens and the ovens, um, they have a little museum there on their gold prospecting and their gold rush. And they, you can actually buy a pan and a sample of what they call material. And in gold prospecting, you know, any material is just dirt or sand that can potentially hold some gold. And um, you can go down the beach there. It's not a sandy, sandy beach, but there's um, places that you can dig and you can actually find pieces of gold. And and this type of gold is um, known as placer gold. And it's, you know, when the the waves or a stream wear the gold right off the gold veins, which are actually, uh, for the most part, where there's a quartz vein coming through the bedrock, there's this chemical reaction, as I understand it, and gold is produced. It's kind of molten rock that comes up and and years ago was created in this chemical reaction between the quartz and the bedrock. And sometimes the veins show up along the coast, sometimes they show up in streams and rivers and that kind of thing. Sometimes they're just buried underground, and if you're lucky enough to find it, um, you can go that route, but anyway, placer gold is what's on the beach, and, and it's also known as flower gold because for the most part, this is very fine, very small pieces and fragments of gold, real gold, um, but if you know how to find it and you know how to do the basic techniques of gold panning, you can find yourself some gold, and uh, I know in Nova Scotia there's at least one full-time prospector who does quite well. I mean, he's 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 got a pretty good thing going, but you know, he does it all the time and uh, and he really knows his stuff. So, 
we were over here at the ovens and, and uh, I saw all kinds of fool's gold down on the beach rocks and you know, started getting excited when I thought it was real gold. Of course it wasn't. Um, but the, the, I could feel the gold fever taking over. So I bought this pan and this kit that came with some test material, took it home after uh, we toured around the, the park there a little bit. And I kid you not, I was sitting on my bed at night um, learning how to pan for gold. I just had a little bit of water, a little bit of material in this pan. I was sloshing around, and I totally figured out how to do it. it there is a trick to gold panning, but once you get it, it's not that difficult, and you can actually use the circular motion of the water in the pan with the material and separate gold from sand, gold from other material, and even gold from fool's gold. So it's pretty fascinating. I, I got hooked hardcore. So I instantly said, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to go back out to the ovens. I'm going to find my own places. I'm going to go looking for gold. And at that particular time, it didn't help matters because gold was skyrocketing in value. Uh, it hasn't been that high since. I think it went up to almost uh, $1,900 an ounce. So I had that in the back of my mind. Man, if I can find just, you know, even some pickers, and I'm throwing these terms out there as I go. But a picker is basically a gold nugget, very, very small gold nugget, or a piece of gold that you, is big enough for you to pick up with your fingers. Uh, the majority of the gold that you're probably going to find is what they call flower gold, very small, and you need to pick it up with a little uh, little jar, little bottle that uh, has a little sucker hose on the front. You just squeeze it and suck the gold up into the bottle, and you just collect your gold that way. But these are they're almost flakes. In fact, sometimes they're so fine and so light that they float. Um, I didn't even think that was possible because gold as itself itself is a material that's you know quite heavy. But if it's small enough, it will float. And there's tricks you can do to displace the gold in the water so that even the small pieces fall down. Maybe I'll do a follow-up episode, but for now I'm going to keep it pretty basic. So um, you get a gold pan. I'm going to have some links in the show notes for this episode where you can order gold pans online. And you can master gold panning. Just go dig some material. And before I get to... Uh, far ahead here, uh, I should state that you can't just take your gold pan, you know, a shovel, a pick, and go wherever you want looking for gold. You can get in a lot of trouble doing that. Obviously, you can't trespass on private property uh, without permission, and you also um, ne sometimes need things like um, a gold claim in order to even prospect on various land. You don't need to own land to get a gold claim. And here in Nova Scotia, and I'm assuming it's the same in uh, other parts of the Maritimes, you need to go to Natural Resources, and you can you can apply for gold claims. And there's, they're not very expensive. If there's claims available, you can claim it, and you just pay the money. Uh, but there are responsibilities that go along with that. You need to commit to keeping a journal and recording you know what you find and that kind of thing. Some people may have a difficulty doing that. You know you don't want to tell even natural resources what you're finding, but that's the law. So you need to commit to a few things. Best bet is to go to natural resources or your local um, natural resources department, wherever you live in the world and ask them about what is required to file a gold claim on a particular portion of land. Um, I think by default here in Nova Scotia, they're, uh, what are they, how big? I forget, I won't, I won't say it because I don't know exactly for sure, but they're, they're a relatively small size, um, and you can, uh, you know, you can then have the rights to gold that you find in those claim areas. Not only that, somebody else happens to be um, digging in an area where you have a gold claim. Legally speaking, you have um, the ability to 
request a portion of what they find. So I haven't gotten that technical. Um, there are places that you can just go and, uh, you know, along the coastline and you can uh, sample material that way. And let's say you find some gold. Well, maybe you want to, you want to, uh, file a claim on land nearby and explore that. So anyway, the whole concept of finding real gold blew my mind. Um, I even jumped in. I got, I'm, I'm fairly impatient by nature. So I realized that, you know, gold panning is cool, but I want to process more material than, you know, I can do in a gold pan in a day. So, if you're keen enough to get to that stage, uh, you want to explore what they call a gold sluice or a sluice box. And there's various forms of sluice boxes. Um, you can have sluice boxes that you just sit right in a stream and the natural current from the stream uh, filters out the material and hopefully leaves some gold in the bottom of your sluice, sluice box. You can get a power sluice box, which hooks up to a battery source and that way, if you go out collect material, you can run a battery in a circulator. It circulates water down the sluice, and you can just drop the material, the dirt, on the sluice box, and the, the flow of the water then um, separates the, the gold from everything else, hopefully. So, there's, I mean, there are some incredible tools out there to help you separate gold from dirt and material and uh, that kind of thing. I'm going to have some, like I say, some links and, and some uh, pictures of things in the show notes. But nonetheless, um, gold prospecting is addicting, no question at all. Um, I'm trying to think back to the story. So yeah, I, I got into it through the ovens. Um, I made some trips back out to the ovens, found some gold, uh, mastered the panning, Got impatient with that, bought a sluice box online. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I want to find my own area where I can uh, potentially find some gold or at least explore uh, somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of other people. So that's when I went to Natural Resources, um, got a gold claim on a piece of land. And how I did that was um, I just looked at an area that I thought had potential it was available, put my name on it, paid the money, got the gold claim, and made some trips out there. And didn't have a whole lot of luck. So then what I did was I um, found a mineral map. And what that did was that allowed me to search parts of the province and identify high concentrations of different minerals. And I found this spot that looked like it had high potential it wasn't that far from some other places I knew that had gold. And uh, I made an exploratory, tri exploratory trip out there. And uh, it turns out I did find a little bit of gold. And that, so that's, uh, that's something that I'm thinking of putting a claim on at some point in time. Um, anyway, gold prospecting, very fascinating. You know, what other hobby can you do or pastime where you actually have the potential of bringing home the gold. I mean, think about it. It's, uh, it's pretty fascinating. Um, there has been cases where people have found pickers, like pieces of gold that they can pick up with their fingers, and actual nuggets. There's gold mines, you know, real company-run gold mines all over the Maritimes, and they are digging up gold from our from our bedrock. I mean, they're, they're doing it. And, uh, you know, they're finding quite a bit of gold. So another thing I'll throw out there is if you're lucky enough to find where an old gold mine was, what a lot of people do is they sift through the old tailings. And that's basically the piles of uh, material that were run through this gold mine years ago. And, and quite often, you know, back then they didn't have the tools that we do nowadays, which can find gold that they might have missed. And not even that, sometimes, you know, it's not hard to miss gold, even if it's in your pan or if you're, it runs through your sluice box. So you can potentially run the same material through your pan or through your sluice box and find gold every time if it's there. Uh, so where do you find gold? You find gold where the, where the gold is. That's, you know, 
That, that's where it is. And you're not really going to run into anybody that's going to tell you where they're finding gold. That's just not going to happen, except for the ovens. And uh, you might want to check that out. Check the show notes for this episode. And uh, maybe gold prospecting will, you know, maybe the gold bug will bite you. Um, who knows? So with that said, that's my little spiel on gold prospecting. Check it out. Have fun. Maybe you've got a new hobby. Who knows? Worst case scenario, hope my story was entertaining. And uh, see you on the next episode. Take care.